Okay, welcome to another video. Uh, today, working on the Moto Marini 350. If you recognize this cute little V-twin, I have done a lot of work on this with the electrical. Um, lots of little bits, little spray paint here and there. I have to refinish the tank, which I'll do in another video, um, and then finish up the lighting and the controls, and then. Basta. It is good to go. But for now, what I want to do today is actually do just that, the lighting. So the biggest sticking point for me on this is it is a battery engine and it does produce AC voltage which charges the battery. Cool. Um, but the ignition actually runs on the AC output. Um, and most bikes do. The only thing is if you put DC, 12 volts DC, into that uh, system, into that AC or ignition system, you will fry your ignition unit, which uh, is hard to come by, uh, or if it's not hard to come by, meaning you have an aftermarket or, or custom thing, there's one company in North Leicestershire, UK, that makes them, and that's where I got my replacement after, yes, learning the hard way uh, by putting an ignition uh, key switch in, I inadvertently put 12 volts into the system. I said, ah, screw it. What, what, you know, because, you know, logic. And I put 12 volts in the system, fried my transducer, it's what it's called, little black box. And so now I, then I had to wait to get a new one. So now I have a new one, all back together, runs. I've got everything wired up. It's amazing. But I have to, in, I have to put a key switch back in, but then I also have to have a way to turn the lights on and off. And unless you have an original OEM key switch, uh, a six pole key switch, which keeps the ignition and the charging battery system separate, you will fry the ignition. So I've had to wire in a little toggle switch over here, which uh, I have run into the ignition, which that turns the ignition on and off, just this little toggle switch. Then the key actually turns the lights on. And I got everything together and I realized, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Why would I only have a, a flip switch keeping the bike from running? Doesn't it make sense to have the key in order to have the bike running? So what I'm going to do is actually back up a second, put the uh, toggle little flip switch over here as the lights on and off. Whereas I don't care if the key is in, if, if you want to put the lights on, because that runs directly to the battery. And then um, on the key switch, have the key switch control the ignition so that if I turn the key on, then I can fire the bike up. If I turn it off, that kills the bike. Uh, I'll also do a, an ignition kill switch on the handlebars later, but I want to have the functionality built in um, now. It's all that to say. And the reason you're looking at this jumble of wires here is to point out the ridiculousness of this. So 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. All of these things are powered from this little red wire that goes to the battery to this terminal right here. It is five millimeters away from the terminal which you don't want 12 volts anywhere near. So if I were to somehow get this 12 volts to this terminal, I'd fry my ignition system. Isn't that, isn't that dumb? So, the way that I have this running is from my ignition coil, rather from my stator, um, I've got power coming out, AC power coming out, to this little box in the form of four wires. I don't know if you can see this. Green, red, and a yellow yellow. Red goes to the battery. The yellow yellow go to my regulator rectifier. Those two yellow wires are what charges the battery through the regulator and rectifier. Um, and then we'll get to the brown one here in a second. But those come out. The green one is the guy you got to watch out for. So the green one is your ignition charge or ignition, ignition power. So the ignition comes out. I've currently got it running to the switch. And then from the, you know, from the switch back to where that green should go on the switchboard. So switch on, current flows to the coils, switch off, uh, current does not go to the coils, therefore the bike doesn't run. First thing I'm going to do is 
remember the lesson that I learned, which is don't fry your coils, don't fry your, your black box. So I'm going to disconnect anything that goes to my transducer. And I'm going to do that with these two green wires over here. So let's get to it and undo the work that I did last week. So all right, here we go. My green coming out. This is my green from my coil, from my stator rather, my running coil. And that goes to the um, switch. And then return from a switch going to the, the fuse box. I'm going to take off my mission switch. And I'll show you here. This is just a universal uh, car switch or whatever uh, switch, ignition switch. So I'm going to take that out. I'm actually going to disconnect all of these uh, after I disconnect the battery because I don't want to shock myself uh, any more than I have already. And that way I don't have any live wires. So this guy I may or may not use again, um, but it is a universal generic one. And when I was Actually, when I went to Italy, I found this guy, um, and if nothing, it's the same thing, it's effectively the same thing, but if nothing else, it says, made in Italy. So, that feels like that needs to be on here, instead of the, the Chevy van connector. So, I will, what I'm going to do is, this is all my 12 volt DC system. And I'm just going to forget about this for a moment in favor of the coil, the, uh, the, the running system. And I'm going to put the running system on here so that without a key, it will not run. But when I put a key in, turn it on, then it runs. Unfortunately, this particular um, key switch doesn't allow for uh, both systems to be in the same thing. I will fry my ignition again if I put 12 volts uh, and the ignition one onto this, but ideally what happens is you have uh, a switch that has two connections. One connection when the key is off and that connects the ignition to ground which kills the kills the spark and then the other connection is when it's on which disconnects the, the ignition from the ground but connects 12 volts to your lights. So it's it's a bit backwards in that a key switch doesn't actually turn the ignition on it just keeps it from being off. Does that make sense? Anyway. Right. So this switch doesn't allow for that because all of the poles, except for the momentary, which is the starter motor, all of these are connected when the key switch is on. So I can't actually put my ignition to ground switch in this because I, again, I will fry it. So that said, I'm going to put my 12 volts back through this toggle switch. Um, I'm going to actually keep these as they are and I'm going to start over with fresh new wires because I can't tell you how many times I needed to test a connection or make a jumper but the jumper that I had had a different kind of connection that I needed so it's always good just to have these sort of laying around in a box if you can uh, and, and use them for another time so I'm going to put those over there and I'm going to grab some fresh wire and by the way all this stuff I've managed to source um, you know, through eBay or Amazon or something, but I also put a bunch of things in the store uh, just to have them in one place uh, for anybody that wants some. So I'm just going to get myself some good lengths of wire, give them a good strip, and get busy. Talking shit about those <sighs> big blue and red ones, Harbor Freights. Well, in this case, I don't have any male spade connectors, so I have to use. I have to use one. Now, what am I truth? I have. Remember, I have my green coming off my stator, being powered by this wire. I'm gonna plug in here. 
and then I am interrupting that flow to the rest of the greens and ultimately the box with this key switch. So I will plug this in. Very careful to know to where it goes to stay out of 12 volt, even though I have my battery disconnected. So now, no spark. I should have spark. And we will test that by looking again to make sure my battery's disconnected because damn you, black box. I'm going to boop and plug back in my transducer. <sighs> and then what am I going to do now? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to employ a few different connectors. So basically what, what I'm thinking about is I have to get that 12 volts to two different terminals. Okay? So I have to get 12 volts. The way the key switch is because it has different poles on it, you can actually just plug things into it. And when you turn the key switch on, that 12 volts is automatically distributed. But with a toggle switch, it's binary. So you have on and off. So I have to get 12 volts to two different things on one terminal. So in order to do that, you know what I'm going to do? This is what I'm going to do. Yeah. So I'm going to put a triple on that instead of a double for a couple reasons. One, because the triple allows me to keep two wires going in the same direction and plug into each other. Also, it leaves me a third one which I can wire later if I want to do turn signals or the horn, which I are in a mess up here, but. I like the I like the idea of having an, an extra 12 volt power support. Plus, I don't want to make this goofy like that. So, sorry, buddy. And whoop, watch this. Get in there. See how cleaner that is? Much cleaner that is. And so now these guys, I'm just going to zip tie the hell out of the way. Look at that. Hell yes. Are you ready? Watch this. I'm just going to unplug my transducers again because I'm crazy paranoid about that. I'm going to plug my battery back in. And with the switch. There we go. Let's see if you can see that. Not only do I have power on, but I've also got my high beams. Oh, it's so exciting. <sighs> it's crazy. So I do not, I do not want 12 volts going to that transducer. So I just want to double check that I have no 12 volts there. I got 12 volts there, but not there. Right? But here is my key switch. And it's awesome little hole right there. Plug it in. And I can go on. Oh man, this is so exciting. Alright. That's that. Thanks for watching this one. Ciao.